Good evening, this is Josh Placer from GameWisdom.com and for this video spotlight I am playing TIS-100 by Zaktronics. This is their fourth game and third puzzle game and don't be alarmed this is exactly how the game looks. We're going back to the 80s with a game built around assembly language programming. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different than my other ones because we are going to be doing a lot of more of a tutorial aspect behind this one. And the reason is that the game has no real tutorial. It comes with literally a 14 page manual that goes over how to use this machine. Which I actually have up in a screen right next to me which I will be referring to frequently during this video. Uh, before anything else before we get started. Okay, uh, one thing, if you're watching this video for advanced tips or to watch someone completely master this game, this is not the video for you. I've learned just enough of the game through reading the manual and doing the first few programs that I can at least talk about the game for people who are brand new, who picked it up, read the manual, and are like, what the hell am I looking at? The game, just like Space Chem, and maybe even Infinite Factory is a little hard to get into without like that little push or guidance. So hopefully this video will help you out. And let me know if you want to see more videos on TIS-100 as I learn more of the game and read the manual probably a few dozen or two dozen more times. Anyway, I think we're ready to get going. If I can actually remember to bring it up. Okay. So, the story involves you going through this machine, the TIS-100, in order to figure out what your uncle, who was using the machine before you, was doing. In order to figure that out, we need to repair the system, and doing that requires us to go through these tests. As you can see, I've done the first four. We may do a few more other than that, but as I said, this video is going to be mainly for tutorial purposes. So, I'm going to load up the first test again. And this is what you're actually going to be looking at. Obviously, this is not the game that's going to tax your graphics cards or anything like that. But, for someone brand new looking at this, I'm sure this is very overwhelming. It was to me at the same time. So, let's go over the screen. Down here are your controls to stop, start, and uh, run the program one step at a time. This basically lets you, of course, control the program and helps you sort of try to deduce if there's something wrong when you can run one step again and again and again. Up here are your goals. This is telling you what you need to do and what you need to output. Most of the puzzles that I've seen revolve around taking an input, usually from up here, and taking it to an output that's down here. Now, if you look over here to your left, this actually tells you what are the inputs that are going to be coming in. You can see in.x, in.a. And then over here, it's showing what you need to output and what the program is expecting. So you can see here, it's expecting in the first spot to get an output.x of 51. So if something other than 51 shows up here, it's going to uh, report an error and your program's not going to work. Over here, these are your nodes, and this is where you're going to be doing your actual programming. And TIS-100 features a very basic take on assembly language. So if you're not used to programming, this could be a little tricky, or if you've never done this before. Now I have the manual again right here. As I said, I'm going to be referring to the manual a few times. So it's going to probably slow up this video a tiny bit. Okay, so... If you look over here, you have ACC, BAK, LAS, MODE, and IDLE. ACC stands for basically the primary storage of the node. This is where uh, when you input something to a node, you need to actually put it in the ACC in order to store it. And this will allow you to move it or to hold it to be used somewhere else. BAK is a secondary storage which acts as basically temporary storage between ACC and BAK and you can only move stuff between these two 
by using the functions of SAV and SWP. Now for this program, this is the basic tutorial. So uh, over here is what you need to do. So if I run this program, you can see we're going to go through the step by step. First, the move up down. This is your basic command. It basically tells the program take a value from the first position and move it into the second position. So move up down means it's going to take this 51 basically up and it's going to move it down. If I said move up ACC it would store this in the ACC. So let's go through a step again. So the 51 went from here down to here, move up a, up down again, it's going to shoot it right down here. And then move up down again, we'll take it to the output, and the output takes it away. And you can see on the left hand side here, where it showed the first step, 51, this is what it was expecting, 51 was what was outputted. Now the input for A, however, is not showing anything. because we haven't ran the program over here. Now this debug log, this is basically the um, game's version of lore text. It's basically clues from your uncle. So it's time to do some programming. The simplest way, now if we do move up comma down, here's what's going to happen. it's going to get stuck right here in this communication failure because we can't input anything into this node so instead we have to go this way move up left move left down move up down and you can copy and paste code as well move up right and then finally if I can actually type move left down so if we run through this, watch over here, folks. So this is the code that I just entered. 68 comes down, goes to the left, and why is it not? Hmm. Oh, I see. It's good to get your directions right, folks. This is supposed to be move right down because it's coming from the right. Move right, there we go. So this time it should work. Takes the input, moves it down the six down to here, move up down, it's going to send this from here down to here. Move up right, it's going to send it over there. And then move left down, we'll send it to the output. And now you can see that the output that I was expecting is there. is going down there. Now the reason why there is some idle is because there is the time that's taking for the code to move from here down to here. Basically, as you can see, it's basically like a production chain, sort of like Space Chem and Affinity Factory. They're moving down one at a time, as so. Now, when it's waiting for a command, basically no other commands will be processed, and this will slow down the machine or slow down your programming. One other thing to keep in mind is that while we are doing this, the code is inputted from up to down. So if I had more than one command here, this will it will commit go down, 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 and it's going to go back up and repeat and repeat and repeat. This is very important when you start doing conditional statements, which we will be showing in probably a minute or so. So let's run through this. And it's done. As you can see, just like previous Zactronics games, the histograms are back. So it grades you on how many cycles, how many nodes you needed to use, and how many instructions you had. So that takes care of that, but you know what? I want to try something a little fancy. So 
it's time for me to do some little experimentation. One second, I gotta pull up the good old manual for this. I'm going to use the any command. So let's get out of here. This is one of the advanced functions in the game. Let's see. Okay, doesn't like that. Just like with the regular program, it pulls up errors when you do something wrong. When any is used, I'm going to actually read you the text here, so maybe this will help you guys out. Any, when any is used as the source of an instruction, the instruction will read the first value that becomes available on any port. When any is used as the destination of an instruction, the result of the instruction will be sent to the first node that reads from any port on this node. I don't know what that means either, folks. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Okay, so Amy just automatically sent that down. Now I wonder what happens if we do this. Any So it's telling it to move. What I'm trying to do is see if there's some way to move this stuff without having to go through all those nodes. Okay, any last first or last port or written using the any explicitly. When any is used as the source of an instruction, we'll read the first value that becomes available. Hmm. Maybe move any left. Okay, so it's pulling from that direction, goes left, but then it's not going anywhere else because we don't have any code here. So it doesn't seem like there's a way to teleport this from here. We have to go there. So let's get back to the second list and I'll show you the next one. Right, let me erase my code from before. So this time we're going to be doing some basic math. And to do that, I need to look at these instructions again. Okay, there's move, swap, save. Let's see, value is added, neg, jump, jazz. Like I said, I'm literally reading the manual here as we're trying to solve this. Okay, that should work. Okay. As I said, this is going to be a bit of a slower video as I'm going to try to go through some of the tutorial messages and just the basic understanding of how things work. So for this one, we're going to read input, double, and then we need to move it down here. So, let's see. I want to try something here. Move up, add. Add is the command that is going to add a value. If you just have add by itself, it should double whatever the input is. If you put a number after add, it's going to add that. Okay, so add is add to the value of AAC and the result is stored. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Again, this game is all about experimentation. Okay, so obviously it doesn't like having add there. So, we're going to move the value into the ACC, because this is the storage. Okay, 
So you can see we have a value here. ACC has a 66. If we run it again, it's going to erase what's in there and give us the next value. So now that we know that the ACC is going to hold that, we need to add, add ACC. What this is going to do is it's basically going to add the ACC to the ACC. Ergo is going to double it. And then after that, we need to move it. Now, because we're taking it from the ACC, we need to move from the ACC down. If I just said move up down, it's going to take the input value instead of the ACC. Now, this also gives us what happens when you have multiple lines of code. What it's going to do is it's going to take this, move it to the ACC, double the value, and then move it down. And then this will repeat and repeat and repeat. So with that being done, now we just need to actually move things down. So move up down. Move up. Move ah. Move up right. And then move left down. So here's what's going to happen. First step, it's going to move the 66 down into the ACC. ACC becomes 66. It's going to then add ACC or double it, so 66 becomes 132. We have a new input ready up here, but we're not quite ready. So then it's going to move ACC down. 132 goes down to here. And now this command is going to take action, and this will start the repeat process. Okay, so up ACC is back up here. Our 132 is making its way down to the output. And so now this 34 is going to overwrite the 132. It's going to add it again, move, repeat. So we can actually fast forward through this or just run it, and there should be no problems. Do, 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 do. Come on. There we go. Someone did this in 84 cycles? How the hell did they do that? Mm -mm -mm. Again, the histograms are a great way to tell or to ask that question of how the hell are your friends doing this better than you? And I'm just not sure of that myself. If you can move... Because you have to input into the ACC because that's what add does. Huh. I wonder. Maybe you speed it up. Hmm. I want to try something again, folks. Let's see. If we do move up right, let's see what happens. So 66 goes down. 66 is there. It's going to double. It's going to take the 34. Okay, so that's how people are optimizing it. They're running multiple cycles, or I'm sorry, multiple commands within a single node. Now, but you can only store one value in the ACC. Again, let's get a little fancy. So this is going to take this move over here. It's going to take number two. This will take number one, number one, go over there. So move left ACC, add ACC, move ACC down. Ah, so this is where the Angie comes in. So I'm going to say move Angie down instead of just move left. That way it's going to know to take anything that comes from here or here and move it down to the output. In theory, this should speed things up and optimize my program. 
Let's see if I did it right. Okay, so 66 comes down. Add. It's going to take the other input, move that over there, and it's going to move ACC down. Okay. AA goes down there. That erase that. And then once it gets here, it's going to move. As you can see, the any is drawing from any from both these nodes, so it just does it one at a time. Let's see. Did it work? Where is the problem? Hmm. Okay, I see. So you can see where the can you see where the issue is, folks? I'll give you a second to look at this. Okay, it's right here. The problem is there is no more value up here. There's nothing more to input. But because of that, the program is getting hung up right there. Hmm. It's asking for an input, but it's not getting it. So close. Let's go to the manual. Okay, move. Would label work here? Okay, any use. Nil won't work. ACC is what we're doing. Move no. Swap. Hmm. Let's see. Transfer execution. Generation. Jump will just move. This will be if the value is zero. This is just for a zero. Transfer execution unconditionally. And this option they offset relative. Okay. The previous instruction will be executed next. The next instruction will be skipped. I think the clue is that I have to use the command JRO. But I have no idea what JRO actually does. I'll give you another quote. JRO, transfer execution unconditionally. The instruction at the offset specified by source relative to the current instruction will be executed next. The previous instruction will be... Okay, wait a minute. Maybe this lets you skip commands, is that right? Hmm. Well, when in doubt, folks, do an experiment. JRO negative one. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it goes down. Ah. Would you look at that? So JRO basically lets you go up and down the command line. Hmm. But the problem though, I can see, is that this is basically used for a, a loop. But once you start this, you can't really get out of that loop. Interesting. Let's see. So my brilliant plan... The 
only way to make this work, there has to be a condition that's not getting any input. Hmm. I can't, uh, I hate that I can't figure this out just by looking at the code and the handy dandy manual. If Zach is watching this, maybe he can give me some pointers. <laughs> Transfer execution unconditionally, instruction of the label. No, we're not using a label. Sub, the value extracted, and that won't help us. Swapping, that won't help either. Greater than zero. Mm -hmm -hmm. No, that won't work. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so that was two. Let's go to number three. I just want to see my code for a second. Uh, no, that wasn't it. I'm just trying to see something that I did. Okay, now I remember what I was doing. Okay, let me get back to number three. Start a new one. Okay, so this one is going to require some moving of values around. And this is where the save and the swap functionality comes in. And this is when you start using the BAK. All right, let me get back over here. Save, swap. Values are exchanged. Okay. So let's look at this. I need to read the values from input A and input B. So here and here. Write input A into input B. Oh no, write in A minus input B to output P and write B minus A to output N. You can see our values over here. So the thing is, here's where the problem comes in with this normally. If I take these values down, move up, down, move up, down. If we run this, you can see we only have one value. And one value won't let us alter in two different spots. So we need to basically store this twice. And this is where the ACK and the BACK, BACK, whatever, come into play. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move these into the ACK. So you can see they're stored there. Now the reason we need to use the ACK is that the mathematical functions only work with whatever is stored in the ACC. So what we need to do now is we have these two values. Now we need to pass them. So. Now if we swap them, now there's two ways we can do this. My way was a little slow when it involves using the back. But I think we don't need that. Let's see. Move ack left. As you can see, it's just taking that value. So thing we can do this pretty easily hopefully so that will move the values now we need to get the value and then move it over here to do the subtraction so let's see what happens sub right 
Now I am putting a space between the lines, but you don't have to do that. It will just ask you things one line at a time. I'm just doing this just to make it a little easier for you folks to read what I'm typing. So if I'm right, move back down, move back down. Let's see if this will work. Okay, so 4493 come down. They get stored in the act. Now it's going to sub right and sub left. Now here's the problem. Nothing is being sent left to right, so it doesn't know what to take. So we'll give it something. Move ack right. Move ack left. Let's see if this works. Okay, 44 comes down. It's going to move what's in the ACC to the right. It's going to move the ACC to the left. And this is going to take whatever those inputs that are coming in, and it's going to subtract them from the ACC. So 44 goes over there. Now, what is the problem? The ACC is moved to the right. The ACC is moved to the left. In theory, this should be doing it. Hmm. I wonder if it's because I'm trying to move in two different directions at once. Let's see. Oh, there you go. So you can't send two numbers. They're basically messing with each other. So I want to see something. Move back. Move on. I wonder. So the problem is I can't send them both at the same time. So, so move back right. Move up back. It's going to sub. And there's nothing coming in. So maybe. So here's the problem. If I leave this like this and then try to move after the sub, it's going to move the incorrect value, the one we just altered. So this is where I can use the save and the swap in order to store this value and then make use of it. So, to do that, okay, we're going to use save. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to move that into the ACK, then we're going to save. And now what's going to happen, watch the back right here. Back becomes 93, so we're storing a copy of that. That becomes 49. So now what we need to do, once we have this value, we need to get what's out of the back into the act again. <laughs> I just love saying that. Okay, so this moves, moves us to the right. So move, save. Then it's going to sub, then it's going to move the act down. 
after that, I need to swap. And that's going to take what's in the back and replace the ack. And then we move ack left. That's going to sub, move it down. So in theory, move at right. Sub left. Move back right. We don't need to change this because we're just sending this over here and then we need to get the input back. So this should, in my crazy theory, work. Move up, down move up down. Let's see what happens. So these two get moved down. This gets saved while this gets sent to the right. The sub left is going to take this 44 and take 93 from 44. From there it's going to move 49 down. This is in read mode because it's waiting for some value here. And until that happens, this will remain idle. It's going to swap the 93 to the 49, the ACK. There we go. And it's going to move the ACK to the left. So there's the 93. It's going to subtract, and then it's going to move that ACK down. And it worked. It worked, but I didn't do so hot. Huh? Someone actually took 25 instructions? Damn my friends for being so much better than me at this game. But uh, just for the tutorial purposes, let's go over what just happened. The problem with this challenge is that you cannot send two numbers left and right. It basically, you either put the mode in read mode or write mode. It can't do both at the same time. So what we did was first we moved the values from the input A, input B into the ACC for storage. This will take what's in the storage and will write it to the right. This command takes what's in the ACC and stores it in the BAK because we need this value to then ship it back over here. Sub left basically is going to read whatever value is in this spot and subtract it and subtract the ACC from that. So that happens here. After that, we move the ACC down because this is the value, the subtractive value is what we need to go down here. Swap swaps the back, which was the original ACC, with the one that we already subtracted, because then we need to move it over here. Meanwhile, excuse me, after this command, you can see right here. This is stuck right here because it's expecting a value and it's going to remain in read mode until it gets it. So if we go forward. There's the ACC left. It's writing it over there, so it's going to read that, and then this is going to continue its program. So this node basically stops. Excuse me. It basically stops until it gets that input. If I didn't put an input here, this program would just hang and the whole program would not work. Excuse me, after that explanation, I need to take a quick drink. I just realized, because this game has no sound, you probably just heard me slurp up some orange juice, and I apologize. Okay. The question is, can we optimize this? And, hmm. Given my limited understanding of the game so far, I don't think we can. But again, any experts watching this video who would like to chime in in the comments, feel free. 
Now, how much time have we done this? Wow, we've done 40 minutes of this game, and I've only done three programs. Damn you, Zachtronics. So I think with that, we'll do... I'll show you the final one, or my last one that I've completed. And I think this will probably be a good way to end the video, because this will teach us about labels and conditionals. Because this will pretty much be all the basics you really need to get your feet wet in this game. Okay, so you can see we got a whole lot of instructions here. Read a value from in, okay. Write 1 to out G if in is greater than 0. Write 1 to out E if in is equal to 0. And then write 1 to out L if in is less than 0. When a 1 is not written to an output, write a 0 instead. Whew. So if you look over here, it looks a little confusing, but we can explain this. This tells us the first thing is going to be 2. So it's expecting a 1 to out dot g. Reason, of course, because the input is greater than 0. But at the same time, it's also expecting a 0 from out dot e and out dot l. What that tells us is that we need to run three different conditionals in order for this to work. And to do that, we need to use labels and the game's own version of if statements. Ah, the if statement. That's uh, one of the core uh, understandings of programming right there. So we're going to get a little bit complicated here. Fortunately, I still have my manual up. One second, I just want to look at this again. So we have zero, less than zero, not zero. Okay. So let's do this. Again, we need to get this input and it's going to have to be run through here, here, and here and have the different values. And as a quick fun uh, little tangent, because you know what the outputs are, you could technically run this entire thing just by type making it do all the inputs manually. It's insane, but it is possible. Something I won't be doing, however. So let's get this going. Move up, down. Move up, down. Move up, right. Okay, so this is where things are going to get fancy. We need to tell the program basically to do one of two things. If the number of the input is its conditional, it should print a 1 and send it down. If it's not, it should print a 0 and send that down. So we're technically not moving the input value. We're simply getting, we're simply using that to decide what we're looking at. So the first thing we need to do, take that and move this into the ACK, because the ACK is what we're going to use to determine this. Okay. Now in order to make use of conditionals, you need to understand the jump command. Jump is J-M-P followed by a label. The label is whatever the hell you want it to be. If you want to make a label called um, take a number and do something, you can type that in. You can make a label P. It doesn't matter. The label is simply used as a reference point to tell the program to go to this line and start running this code instead of what it was doing previously. So let's try this out. We know from here that the first number is going to be a 2, which means that we need the conditional to tell it that if whatever's in the act is greater than zero, it should do something. And that is the command JGZ. So JGZ, and I'm going to name it pause. Now it's saying undefined label because I have not in actually created that label yet.
but JGZ pause is going to tell the program it's going to do a check. What that check is, it's going to check ACC for the value. If it's greater than zero, I'm telling it to jump to this label pause. To make a label, you simply type in the word or statement you want and do a, a colon after that. So here's the condition. Move left act stores it here. JT, JGZ pause is going to check the act and if the act is greater than zero, it's going to do POS. Now here is the bit of the catch. The program is going to run. Now actually, huh. I just had a um crazy idea. Jay-Z, move it up. Hmm. That could actually work. Move it up. I'm just thinking to myself here because I think I just had a, a brief uh, programming epiphany. Okay, I think this could work. So here's what we're going to do. This goes to the act. So if the number is greater than zero, I want to perform this code in pause. And that is, I want it to output a 1. So to do that, we say move 1 down. Because remember, whatever the first value is after move is what it's going to send. I could make that 9,433 and it will send 9,433 down. Remember, I'm not using the ACK to um, to tell it to do, I'm not using the act value for anything. So here's what we need to do. Now if this isn't positive, then we need to do something else. So if it's not positive, we're going to tell it to move 0 down. So what's going to happen, again, it's going to do the code in order. So up, it's going to go here. Now here is the problem. Let's see. You'll see it right here. I know there's errors, but I'm doing that on purpose. Okay, so here's where the problem is. Look right here. We have a negative 2 stored. So obviously the JGZ pause is not going to work. So as correct, it's going to input a 0 down. That's good. But watch. You can see it then inputs a 1 down. And that's not correct. The reason it's doing that, obviously, is that it's still can all this JT, JGZ, and jump business. All it does is moves the command to these specific points, but then it's going to continue going down. So here is my crazy idea. I am going to use a JRO command. This again moves the code how many places I want. So JRO I'm going to say one, two, three. I'm going to say negative three. So in theory, if it gets a wrong value and it goes to zero, goes down, JRO three should send back one, two, three, and then we'll run this again. If pause happens, it just goes down here and then we know that's correct, so it's just going to shoot back up here. This way, I can allow it to do both commands. I don't need to do anything else. 
Another option that I have is to set all of this under a label and then have it simply jump to that label. That would be a little bit more complicated. This should do the trick. So we just spent about like four or five minutes on just this one node. We still need to worry about this node. So again, we're going to move left. Okay, so first, move ACC right. This way, we know the ACC is going to be moved to this node to check it. So, move left ACC. And again, we need to check it. So, move right ACC. So, this shoots over here. And of course, we don't need to send this anywhere else. Okay, so it's taking the ACC. We need to create another label. I'm just going to make the label true. Again, you can make it whatever the heck you want it to be. Okay, so second one, out.e if it's equal to zero. For that command, we need to use, let's see, not J Z. We need to use J E Z to tell if it is equal to zero. So J E Z true. Again, label is going to just make it jump down to here. Okay. So obviously, if it's not true, then we want it to output a zero down. And then I'm going to do my JRO negative three. So let's see, JRO one. Actually, if it's here and goes one, two, th one, two, three, that should be a negative four. I could also, for simplicity, say simply copy and paste my code over to each node that way. But I figured doing it one at a time like this will help you guys out as you're trying to learn and make sense of this. Okay, so what's in true? We know again, true simply has to tell me move up down and again once it gets to the bottom of your command it's going to shoot automatically up anyway. Now we don't have to clear the ACC because again when a new input is brought in it's going to overwrite what's in the ACC. As a quick uh, bit of instruction if you need to delete the ACC before you're reading another input simply type in NIL and that will remove whatever's in ACC and change it into a zero. I think you may have to input, oh, I'm sorry, read the read nil, or I think you may just have to type nil. Actually, we can test that right now. Isn't programming fun, folks? Yeah, so it needs, so we need to simply move nil into ACC. So if you watch this, two, the nil replace it by zero. Now obviously we don't need that here. So let's get back to it. So move left ACC. And for this last one, it has to be less than zero. And for less than zero, that command is zero, if the value is not zero, that was JNZ. Now we want greater than, which was JGC. There we go. J so for less than zero, that is JLZ. So JLZ, true. Again, if true if it's not true, we simply want it to move a zero down. And this time, JRO will be negative three. And again, if true, we'll move one down. Okay, so this should, in theory, work. Let's see. Uh, move left ACC, move left. Why did 
Definitely not war. Move left. ACC. Move right. Oh, okay. I see my mistake. Did you spot the mistake, folks? I feel like a um, children's show host. Can you see the problem? Well, uh, the issue is right here. I'm telling it move right ACC. When I should be, I mix these up. It should be move ACC right. Because I'm telling it to take the ACC and move it there. Now I can do this because it's going to leave the value of the ACC. Let's see. Move ACC. Just true. Okay, so this is the one that I'm curious about. There we go, it worked. JRO, move ACC right, move a zero, JRO negative four, shoots it back up, replace, and done. Damn it, I'm not better than my friends. I did with less instruction the last time. But again, before we wrap this up, Let's go over what I just did again for those of you watching. So that way you have an idea if you decide to play this game on your own. So up here, takes the input, move up, down, move up, down, move up, right. Remember, up, move requires first where it's coming from and then where it's going. So takes it from up, moves it down, up, down, and then takes it from the up, moves it to the right. Now this is where things get interesting. First, it's going to take what's in the left or, or other words, it's going to read what's from the left, moves it into the ACC for storage. Because I need this to be checked by each of these nodes, I then take the ACC and move it to the right, which in turn means it's going to copy the ACC, moves it over here. Now JGZ is a condition that says if the value of the ACC is greater than zero, it's going to jump to whatever my label is. Again, the label is whatever you want it to be. For this one, to make things simple, I'm going to make it all true, just so that it's a little easier for you guys to read. There we go. So if the number is greater than zero, it's going to jump to label true. Here's label true, goes down, and because it's true, I want to output a one. So I say move one down, which means it's going to move whatever that number is, it's going to move the number one down. Again, I can make move that first source whatever I want it to be. After move one down, it's going to shoot back up to the top because there's no more commands. If the value, now let's say this value is negative five. So it's going to go down, negative five goes into ACC, then it's going to copy negative 5, moves it to the right. Now, JGZ true is not going to work because it's not greater than 0. So in that case, I'm telling it to move a 0 down. Then we come to this line. And this is the more advanced uh, command. JRO basically tells the program to move the reading of that node back or forward a set number based on whatever the value is here. I said negative 4, so what happens is that it goes up or back 1, 2, 3, 4. Because if I didn't do that, after it would be done doing move 0, it would immediately go back down here and do the true value anyway. Because again, it's reading things from top to bottom. Now I was thinking to myself, if there is some way to um, not to avoid this, and 
I can't think of one. You, you need some way to force it to go back up. You could also use the jump command and set a label up here, like right there, to force it to go back to the top. But I figure this was just a little bit more elegant. And again, when it comes over here, JEZ means if the value, I believe, is less than zero? No. If the value is zero, JEZ is the check for that. And then JRO if it's less than zero. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking JLZ. Sorry, a lot of these commands are a little tricky. Now, from what I've been reading the manual while I've been talking to you guys and playing the game on my own, I don't think there is a way to um, create your own conditions. You know, say that if x is equal to 10 or y is equal to 5, stuff like that. The game just isn't built for more complicated conditions like that. It's simple less than zero, equal to zero, greater than zero, or any number that's not zero. Let me just make sure that, yeah, value is not zero. And that is it. Um, I think that's going to do it. Program still works. Good for me. And you can see there's still a lot more segments to get done. But um, I hope that has been a good tutorial on TIS-100. Like the previous games from Zachtronics, there's a lot to learn here. And the games don't necessarily have a tutorial to show you how things work. This is the specification editor. This allows you to create your own uh, programs and challenges, which I am not even going to touch right now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so you see you can do whatever you want. And I've heard some people that an advanced function is you can actually create like little mini games or little like basic graphics. Uh, let's see. Which I have no idea. Oh, there's a visualization mode that lets you write things using an XY coordinate. That is something that I will certainly not be doing in this video because I have no idea what the hell that is. <laughs> but I think I've given you guys enough food for thought, at least for this video. Again, let me know if you want to see more play of TIS-100. I'm going to be going through this game now that I got the basics down. But again, I want to make this video because I've been putting off playing the game because I thought it was going to be very demanding and very strenuous to learn. But I seem to have picked it up a little bit more thanks to playing the video, talking out with you guys, and of course, definitely read the manual. Especially if you don't read the manual all, at least read page 10 that shows example programs. That at least gives you the very early steps of learning the game. But before that, it shows you all the commands and all the ways of reading and writing to the nodes. I'll probably read the manual at least two or three more times after this video is over. Or who am I kidding? I'll probably read it 10 or 15 times and every time I'm playing the game just so I have those commands right neatly in front of me. Uh, let's see, is there anything else to go over, at least for this video? We did the basic commands, I showed you labels and jumping. Uh, let's see, anything else? Huh. Oh, I can actually show you what I was talking about with the this is the uh, less elegant version of the program that I just made. This was my first attempt. It used more instructions, as you can see. And now, if, while I grab a quick drink here, I'll let you guys look at this for a second and see if you can spot why this is not as optimized as my previous program.
Okay. The first thing is that I am deleting the ACC. I don't need to do that because again, the ACC will be overridden when a new value is read into it. The other thing as you can see is I have a start label at the top. This was a replacement for the JRO that I did before. JRO simply moves the reading back or forward so many spaces while jump just automatically sends it back up to the top. So this is the more basic way of what I just did and for comparison we'll just go back to that one. There it is. And this is the more this is the um, slightly more optimized version of that previous code. Again, JRO just sends it back instead of having to use a label. So that saves me on commands. And I think that's going to be it. Hopefully I've given you some food for thought or at least enough to start your understanding of TIS 100. And again, if you'd like to see more videos, definitely let me know in the comments. So, uh, for those of you who've been watching this live, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully I help you out. For those of you who've been watching this on YouTube, again, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, as I said, this will be a great stepping stone for you to learn how to play TIS 100. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe to the channel. That'll help me out a lot. And make sure everybody check out game-wisdom.com for posts and podcasts relating to game design in the industry. I've had multiple chats, excuse me, chats with Zachtronics owner and lead designer Zach Barth. I also recently put up my review of TIS 100, which you can find everything from the site. And please check out our Patreon campaign to secure some much-needed monthly funding for all this. You can find me on Patreon under Josh Beister or Game-Wisdom, and any donations would be greatly appreciated. And finally, for the YouTube crowd, if you would like to watch these videos live, maybe ask questions if I'm doing another tutorial or whatever, you can find me on Twitch under GW Beister, and I'm usually streaming most nights around 10 Eastern. So, thanks again for tuning in. Um, again, I may play this some more. I don't know if I'll do another stream, but who knows? We'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks again for tuning in. Have a great night, and I will catch you all next time. Take care.